the guy's just just mad cool, like cuddly kind of dude, you know what I mean? And that mustache and the little vibe. John looks like a, a, an impresario. He looks like a bizarre character, you know, with the mustache and everything. Outwardly calm, stoic, reserved, inside it's hell. His great sense of humor, uh, but in business, it's his great sense of diplomacy and balance. The guy gets it. He gets music. He's a born promoter, but with the heart of gold. He's that rare combination of business and creative. He has a thousand ideas a day, and some of them are actually good. The most important thing about John that people don't realize is that first, he's a fan. Second, he's in the business. Very fine fella, but I don't want you to tell him that. For 29 years, John Brunton has produced groundbreaking television at every level, from docs to talk to big network specials, from live to drama to comedy to reality. John and his Insight crew have done it all. The whole time, one of Johnny B's driving passions has been to shine a little light on Canadian music. Here's a producer that can do a touchy-feely documentary on one day, and the next day do a high-gloss variety show. He can do series drama. He can do edgy late-night talk shows. The versatility is astonishing. There's a new romance. John's love of music started, I think, in the womb, I guess, with Mother Humming, and it just never stopped. John, the youngest of three, threw himself headlong into the art of living. He was a standout high school athlete who approached sport with determination, focus, and passion, qualities that would later define his career. In 1981, John's passion was flowing, and Heart of Gold was the end product. Canadian music went prime time, and the whole country felt the pride. The following year, John brought more Canadians into the light when he produced the very soulful special, Indigo, with Salome Bay. It was a groundbreaking variety special, I think for the first time in Canada, starring a black woman and telling the story of black music. It was an amazing show. By 1987, It's Only Rock and Roll was added to John's roster. The show put emerging Canadian bands on stage beside huge international acts and Johnny took the country on its first memorable trip into Wayne's world. This is Wayne's Power Minute. All right! Then John focused on the history and character of Canadian country music. He fought to create a forum for voices not often heard and produced the classic special, Country Gold. You can better serve your country by living somewhere else. This guy is Canadian through and through, and uh, we're kind of brothers in that regard. In 97, John took on the toughest task in the business, the late-night Canadian talk show. Open Mic became the most successful show of its kind in history, and music was its cornerstone. It was hugely successful in providing that launch pad for a national audience to suddenly become aware of a band that they may not have ever heard of before. I saw 700 bands. I was able to see, like, the Nickelbacks when they weren't Nickelback. I was able to see, like, the Sum 41s when they weren't the Sum 41s. He gave everybody a fair shot. Then came Joni Mitchell and the project John calls the most personally satisfying of his career. When you're working with Joni, who's the consummate artist, there really are very few people that I would uh, have the courage to uh, create a collaboration for her with. And really, it ultimately became a collaboration between John and Joni. And, you know, they grew close on a personal level. She respects and likes them. Did a great job. When CTV needed someone to steer Canadian Idol, they chose Joan. Idol has become the most successful series in Canada's history. The success of Canadian Idol is really a reflection of A, the talent in this country, but B, it really is John's determination to present it in a way that makes Canadian audiences feel like it's theirs. John insisted that the show reflect our country and brought unique innovations to the Idol franchise. Canadian contestants were the first in the world to play instruments. How Canadian can that get? We're doing the first instruments to Gordon Lightfoot's Canadian Railroad Trilogy. That just another testament to John's vision, man. This guy is not complacent. Mm -hmm. Idol has moved the country, and much to John's delight, launched careers for some talented young Canadians like Jacob Hogarth. The biggest thing that I've learned from John is that you can't be afraid to take risks. If you can't take a chance, then you uh, should be working in a bank. In making Idol truly Canadian, the show has naturally become world class and attracted some of the biggest names in show business. In 89, John produced his first Junos for one reason. The band was going into the Hall of Fame, and John saw history in the occasion. John phoned us and he said, I've got something so special for you. You know, I want you to play with the band. And he said to us, and John, you know this is true. He said, they're really excited about having you. 
Then in walks Robbie Robertson and looks at us and says, there's too many Indians here. And we're like, he said, all we need is a drummer. <laughs> of course, we look at John thing. So they asked for us, did they, John? <laughs> It turned out that it was a really fantastic event. And he probably wouldn't have been able to make it happen had he told the truth. This year marks John's 13th Junos. His vision has changed the very nature of the show. John has sort of spearheaded this reinvigoration of the Junos. The Junos is much more of a spectacle. The reach is bigger, the international reach is bigger, and he's had everything to do with that. He's made it a rock show. He's made it this big production that travels across the country and is so exciting to watch, and it is an event. With 12,000 people here, I think the Grammys ought to copy the Junos next year because this is the way to go. Don't get it twisted. When you see all these American shows in an arena, John Brunton did that first. I remember Halifax, for example, which was the year we had Coldplay and the Black Eyed Peas join the show. There we were, and it was John's vision that Canadians would stand shoulder to shoulder with these international artists. Throughout, John Brunton has made passionate statements. From early documentaries on acid rain and Greenpeace to the Terry Fox Marathon of Hope, from Music Without Borders to the Concert for Tsunami Relief, John has always stepped forward with his time, his vision, his thoughtful guidance, and most importantly, his friendship and his love. He's actually physically changed my life, you know what I mean? Here I am just, you know what I mean, basically just a little hood rat kid coming up with a dream. And you meet a cat like that and he, you know, takes you under his wing and, and makes your dreams happen. John is an amazing leader. Everything he does, he does with a tremendous amount of passion and integrity and feeling. He loves music like people love food, like people love good sex. He gives a crap. I love that about him. The guy likes music. Bless his heart. Congratulations. Uh, job well done. Don't stop. The Rock. I can't think of a better person to, to get a, a, a lifetime achievement award because he's achieved a lot. Good on you, brother, and uh, congratulations. Congratulations, pal. We are so proud of you. Everyone loves you. I love you. I'd like to uh, uh, congratulate you with a, with a brew, so get yourself out to my place as quick as you can. I promise you that tonight I will buy the single malt. Cheers. We both have a lot more to do, and I, for one, I'm counting on you, John.